What is up, YouTube? BTM here, bringing you another match of my Age of Empires 3 series. This match is on the can. We even had it set to random maps, but still, even random maps wants to play on an overused map. God damn you, random maps. As you can see, though, starting off the game, I'm getting my villagers tasked to all the appropriate resources, getting my explorer going. I am playing Ottoman, so I'm going to beeline to where I think there will be a trading post. And this game is underway, and it is good. It's the second match against this guy I've had. He's also a Master Sergeant. And he's a subscriber of mine. He uh, saw that I was on and invited me to a game, and I joined. I won't join every game all the time, but when I can, I do enjoy playing with you guys. So as you can see, though, my explorer is going straight for the beeline. I get most of my villagers immediately on food, and I am, of course, continuing to enjoy playing as Ottoman. I have to say, not having to worry about villager production, having a really strong, easy military, having a relatively simple build order. It's kind of helping me get a little bit more of my micro down, and I want to get really good with my Ottoman micro. And then I want to switch to a sieve that isn't as OP. Now, I know there are some of you guys out there who are like me who would be mad that I'm playing Ottoman. I mean, that's why I avoided playing Ottoman. But I'm just enjoying it, especially against this guy, because my win percentage without um, being a better sieve is a little bit dismal. So as you can see, I'm getting my trading post up. I got all my villagers on food and building a house. A little bit of hotkey action. The hotkey uh, for the house is E, in case you're wondering. The hotkey for the trading post is P, not T. So if you're trying to figure out why you're pressing T while you have your explorer selected and you're not getting a training post going, that would be why. And since I do have 250 wood, I decide, you know what? Let's get a second. Uh, let's get a second training post going. I could have saved that wood for after I aged up and built a stable or a barracks, but nah, I figured it'd be nicer to get a little bit faster um, EXP trickle coming in because I thought that in the long run, having better shipments would be more useful. So. Here we go. I am um, use the H key there to get to my home city, and I get the villager shipment sent as soon as possible. I am trying to get a little bit more hotkey savvy. I've been kind of at my mid-skill level for a very, very long time in this game, partially because I've taken really long hiatuses. I have taken at least three separate year-long plus hiatuses from the game. And that's not very conducive to getting good. And then plus, I've never been super concerned about being wildly competitive. And so I never really bothered to lock down all the hotkeys, but I am trying to there. So I do decide to go grab that treasure. It was, what, 15 experience from killing the little guardian, plus another 45, 30 experience from killing the, or grabbing the treasure itself. Every little bit helps. I do thought, I did think the getting some experience was nice. Now you may have noticed I chose not to grab the coin crates for a while because I thought it wasn't necessary. I did age up with the 400 wood politician, and my thought is this. We're going to get a settler walking to the middle of the map. We're going to build a barracks and then an artillery foundry as soon as we age, although we'll need to get wood later for an artillery foundry. But we'll build a barracks with 200 wood we get from aging, and we're just going to be ready to spam Janissary. So that's why I actually still have most of my units on food and one on gold, rather than switching them to a more wood-based transition as you would usually see during a Ottoman, or really just any civs colonial. Now I do here use the wall segment. I want to see how far forward I can build and then get just about as close as I can as possible. I do put that guy on wood. And I had a reason for that. So when you look through the fog of war, if you scout in an area, you will see if animals are dead or not. So let's say you're coming into the second age and you're playing against an Indian, an Ottoman, or some other fast, aggressive civ, maybe a Russian. If you see a couple dead animals in the fog of war near you that are not your own, it's a pretty good giveaway that your opponent is in fact building a forward base there and has a settler within the proximity ready to attack. So I did not want to attack those deer, and I did not want to give him any indication that my settler was sitting there ready to go. I do build a house, and of course you saw me use a little bit of hot, hockey action. I'm trying to get to the point where I don't have to click too much. I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, but we're going to go in here. As you can see, we aged up, and then we have a lot of food, a lot of gold. We're pretty good off, I think, in terms of being able to hit to the next age. Again, not as fast as a lot of the pros that like to get there, but we are getting a lot better. I could have used the B key there to get the... Uh, Barracks selected a little bit faster. And my first two shipments in the next age are going to be the five Janissaries and three Husser. And again, my thought is I just want pressure. I haven't really done any up to this point. It's just straight Ottoman rushes. And I wanted to try it. Now, granted, I have built three trading posts. So does that count as a rush or not? I will leave my hand, myself in the hands of uh, the esteemed jury of my audience. But I thought I was being pretty aggressive. For me, it was pretty aggressive. I'm about to population myself. I wonder if I'm going to catch it. Maybe not. Maybe. I mean, I just played this match. It's kind of funny that I don't remember. But, yes, here we go. Look at that. Boom. Pressing the E key. And I got to say, the more time you spend being able to actually think about things, the less time you spend having to re-click things that you've already clicked, the easier it is to play this game. At this point, though, I do have enough uh, resources in the bank to get another 
set of Janissaries going. So maybe I should have added, built a stable instead of that second training post and had some more Husser pop out. That probably would have been a little bit more aggressive, a little bit stronger. Allowed me to put the game away, but I don't know. I, that's just something to think about now for myself looking forward. I do have my five Janissaries walking up to the front of the map and they're going to join with my other five Janissaries. He does have a Cory de Bois gathering on the front of the plateau and I'm unable to kill it. So I think, all right, we're gonna chase it. And then I decide maybe we're not gonna make it. So we're gonna run back. Now you might be wondering why three Husser if you already sent the, if you already sent the five Janissaries. Well, here's why. I'm expecting him to send eight crossbowmen as his first shipment. So, pardon me, had a little bit of burp there. I'm expecting him to send eight crossbowmen as a shipment. And I wanna preempt his atten att intention. <laughs> Attention, intention. I want to preempt his ability to destroy my Janissaries by having some Husser on the field to basically just go wreck, wreck shop. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to put the Husser on a different tab. I'm actually just going to put them on the back back flank. I don't want them to run into that battle unless I see some units. And there he goes. He managed to get his pop of five musketeers and his pop of crossbowmen at nearly the same time he does pick off a Janissary. And I think, wow, that's pretty good. So I'm going to try to actually switch the positioning of my Husser and my Janissaries. I want my Janissaries to be standing on the plateau. And then I want my Hussers to grab it from the rear. You know what we say about grabbing things from the rear? Well, if it's consensual. But yeah, let's grab that booty. Just kidding. All right. I don't see. That took a weird turn. Maybe I'm not as cool as I think. Either way, here comes the fight I was anticipating. He shoots a couple things, though, and then runs away. And uh, he's actually, it's almost as if he watches my videos. Well, he does. He told me he does. But as you know, we say on this channel, frequently, he who fights and runs away may live to fight another day. However, I'm feeling like I have a lot of units here, and I really want to walk in and take the advantage. So I'm trying to get my cab to, my hustler to navigate around without losing any ground. And I'm just sitting in this town shooting at things. But then I feel like I'm not going to win. I'm taking a lot of fire from that town center. Now, taking fire from the town center is not bad because every second he has units in it, the second that his villagers are not gathering. But at the same time, I'd rather not rush into unfriendly fire if I'm not going to win the match just yet. I certainly felt like I was not in a position to win the match. So I did send four villagers initially. I probably should have shipped the 700, gold, the 700 wood instead. But I'm going to ship the 700 wood now. I'm going to use it to upgrade some of my training posts. And then I'm going to use it to build houses and an artillery foundry so I can make some abbots. At this point, he knows that I'm going pretty heavy on the old Jans, which means he's going to start going pretty heavy on the old crossbowmen. Now, while Janissaries do have much cooler hats than crossbowmen and a, a much cooler saber with them, I do need to be preemptive. Now, he is currently making a lot of musketeers, but that is going to change. In fact, to be honest, I think he's being a little bit foolish going heavy on the Musketeers right now. I understand why, but he probably should have gone screw. Well, if he could have gone and Musk Husk off. Now, even Musk Husk isn't very strong against the Ottomans if they're doing good with a lot of, uh, they're doing good with a lot of Janissaries and Abyss mix. I am a little bit out of food, though. I'm doing a decent job right now keeping all my resources into units. That's one of the problems I have. I tend to float a lot of resources, as you guys can see in the last match which of course is in this playlist. And at this point, I'm doing one of the favorite things I love to do. And I'm not very good at it, but I love it when I get two armies attacking two places at once. So right now I'm killing a couple of villagers in the back of his town with just a pair of Hussar. But I'm also marching a very sizable force of Janissaries to the front of his town. And I'm forcing him to react to the front while I get to do some dirty action in the back. Oh my God, there's no way this doesn't sound like a, sound like a complete pervert. He is, however, kind of savvy to it, and I start to have some of my units, my Janissaries, walking forward, and he manages to pick off a lot of my Janissaries because I wasn't paying close enough attention and pulling them back. And actually, if he had pushed forward there, he probably could have done a lot of damage. He could have taken down my artillery foundry and, in fact, killed me, but he didn't probably realize that. It's one of those things where it's, it's one that was one of those tempo things where I think it would have been very hard for him to realize it. I do decide at this point, though, to go stand my hustled by those two elephants. I do know that if he's sitting in this town, he's going to be running out of places to gather food, and I'd like to starve him out. If he's gathering on berry bushes and I'm not, I'm in a much better place. I do decide to build a market, and then a church, and then some houses. Look at that, a lot of infrastructure going down in my town. Unfortunately, I look away and I lose my two hustler. But again, they were free hustler, and they certainly did a pretty alright job. I'm running out of gold and resources. A little bit of a tight spot here. Um, a lot of wood, though, and I was really kind of frustrated here. I was like, Oh my goodness. But it was, of course, because I sent 600 wood, then 700 wood, but not in that order. So I sent it in the opposite order. So I do decide, of course, just to build lots of buildings. I want to get my buildings out on the field, and I want to get to a stronger position. He does manage to kill a villager of mine with a three hustler raid to the top of the map. However, most of my villagers are in my town, so it is going to be fairly easy for me to 
in fact, just take advantage of him and kill him. And at this point, since I am floating a bunch of extra wood, I think let's get a stable going. There comes Hussar. I'm not worried about it. Nearly all my villagers are in defendable positions. The only villagers that are not are the ones gathering to the bottom of the map. You do notice there, I do take the chance to buy some resources because I was thinking about them. Okay. I'm moving some villagers by the market. I built this market. Let's get some upgrades going. So we are going to get hunting dogs and gang saws going. Probably should have gotten them sooner. I'm not great with it. And of course, I'm just trying to turn all my resources into units and more advantages. So I'm going to buy the stagecoach or the rickshaw upgrade. And bam, he marches straight into my town and or my forward base and gets a lot of units lost. Looks like he lost three or four units. Now here's a pro tip. If you're marching forward into a place you're expecting enemy action, you of course use a Z key to move forward and shoot automatically. See there, I press Z and then my uh, my cursor became a little sword. That means it's the attack move. That means they're going to move forward towards that spot. But if they see any other units, they're going to walk away. Now, I was going to just retreat here, but I got a chance to kill a quarter of water or two. And, you know, French villagers are powerful. If I can pop out a villager or two of his, that's going to make me feel pretty good about my own chances to win. And I am, of course, going to try to keep getting my units into an army. Now, he does attack me with three more Hussar, which makes me think that he does have a stable going down somewhere. But... <laughs> He, he, he ran his Husser into a mass of mostly, mostly Janissaries. I do have a couple of Abbas mixed in, but my composition isn't the greatest yet. So I was kind of like, wait, what? But that's okay. And uh, I do not buy the market. I do not buy the trading post upgrade on the other route since he does control two of the three. However, I do buy it on the smaller route that I do exclusively control. And I love trading posts. I mean, it's just so OP. I am now going to send the Silversmith upgrade and I'm trying to get things done. I am out of gold, so I can't really upgrade the amount of villagers I have. So I have run out of the ability to make more villagers. And I don't really have enough anything to get more units going. I'm doing pretty decent turning all my resources into units. And I'm feeling pretty good about it. Now, I'm being a little bit of an idiot here. I'm doing the exact same thing over and over again. I'm just walking into his town the exact same direction. But he hasn't really been able to do anything about it. So I do decide to get some damage down on that house. I'm going to press the alt key. I just want my units attacking everything they possibly can. I'm getting a lot of what looks like a lot of easy kills. I'm going to get those kills. I'm going to walk away. I'm just, I'm not a big believer in taking unnecessary damage. And if he's under pressure, I do believe in my ability to boom and kill him pretty solidly. There's no need, if I'm in the driver's seat, there's no need to be overly aggressive and lose a game. However, if I was in a little bit more of a dangerous position, then I would feel like I need to be a little bit more aggressive. My resources are starting to stockpile just a wee bit, but we are going to get a couple more jams, a couple more Abyss on all the good stuff, the usual stuff queued up. And that is indeed going to help us get going here. I'm um, running out of upgrades. I'm going to ship economic theory. And then I believe about now I think, you know what? No, we're going to ship two towers. And we're going to put a tower at the top of the map, tower at the bottom of the map. I don't want his villagers to feel like they can leave. And I am going to wait until I get 200 gold and I am going to upgrade the amount of settlers I can make. Because being pop capped at 25 settlers, it does indeed suck. However, I have been pretty good with it. But at the same time, you know, I really want my economy to boom. I don't want to just be running into his town doing the exact same thing. At this point, though, I am looking for a pretty decisive win. I have 28 Janissaries, 8 Abyss guns. I think I can actually take the game right now and push in and win. So we're going to go take down that barracks. And then we're going to push straight to the town center. Plus, we are about to have another batch of Janissaries pop. Do I have five or just one? I always try to leave at least one Janissary queued up because I always want something going for one military unit queued up. Unfortunately, here I have my military unit queued up. I forget to finish the queue, if you will, so we turn that one into a full five. I easily could have had five there instead of however many ended up appearing. Here I do, I believe, shift click to make sure I get the max amount of units. So that now is always good. And he is trying to fight me at this point. He just kind of realized it's a little bit of a blast. stand. his uh, barracks are down. I'm going to just actually siege down a couple of houses probably really quick before I start to actually go for the town center. Sieging houses is nice because if you can population them, they won't be able to make military units to counter you, which is a good, good thing. But I did end up running back. I didn't feel like I had enough of an advantage. So I'm just going to get my two trading posts, or pardon me, not trading posts. I'm going to get my two outpost wagons out on the field. Because if we can keep him off any hunts, that would be good. Granted, he hasn't made any aggressive moves for hunts. He's probably just sitting on the berry bushes in his town, which sucks to be him. I do have four more Abbas coming, and I'm thinking, all right, we'll just go for the top house. We'll take that down. Once that house is down, we'll go take down the rest of everything else. And at this point, I'm pretty much just realizing I didn't need to go in and kill him. There's no need to play too many more games. So he is trying to march forward, but he's got an army the third of the size of me. I probably didn't need to just drag it down as much as possible. But again, I knew I was in the driver's seat. I, I didn't want to lose, you know. I got to play it cautiously. Prior to these last two games, I've been on a multi-game losing streak, and I was not feeling pretty good about it. 
So I thought, you know what, let's uh, let's make sure we bring this one home appropriately, and we do indeed. And so I do beat my subscriber again. Ha! Just kidding. I do appreciate playing with you a lot. And, you know, um, if you get the chance to message me, do try. I can't always play, and I do like to only record games that are close to my own rank. But, hey, if we can play, we will play. Thank you guys so much for watching. It was a great game. I like playing against other Master Sergeants. My goal is to get around the Captain rank, so we're going to see how that goes. Hotkeys and Lamey Ottomans are are the key and I was kind of happy after this game I just started playing the Ottomans and I get why people hate them all right ladies and gentlemen um, I'm about to bow out but before I go I do want to read you our quote of the day I'm not doing Sun Tzu and the Art of War I am doing a new book um, it's called it's called the Art of Worldly Wisdom by Balsatar Gracian which might be the greatest name ever and it says a wise man gets more use from his enemies than a fool from his friends all right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is BTM. I would like to give you a hearty thanks for watching. And until next time, good luck and happy hunting. BTM out.